Yes, uh, happy evening one and all. So today we'll be starting with cash flow statement. The treatment of cash flow statement is recommended by accounting standard 3. So all the things that we'll be doing in this particular chapter is dictated by accounting standard 3. I think in the previous session we already saw the importance of the accounting standards. Why they are there. Basically what? Basically every standard covers only four things. Recognition, measurement, presentation, disclosure. Hmm? Okay. So now we'll start with a particular standard called accounting standard 3. This is something which we might have done, right? Somewhere in our BCom, probably. Yes. Somewhere we have done, no? Hmm, okay. So what does cash flow statement mean according to you, sir? What does cash flow statement, the word cash flow statement mean to you? A statement which shows inflows and outflows in cash. Perfectly put. Cash flow statement is simply a, a statement. It's not a ledger account or anything. It is simply a, a statement which just captures two information. Cash coming in to the organization and cash going out of the organization. That's all. This inflow and outflow of cash, we put it in a particular statement and that particular statement is being named as what is being called as cash flow statement. Hmm? So don't be misled by the term cash. The cash here means cash and cash equivalents. This statement doesn't capture only cash coming in and cash going out. It captures cash and cash equivalents coming in and cash and cash and equivalents going out. So in this topic, probably we need to learn something known as extra component known as what is this cash equivalent. Hmm? Okay, not much of a theory over here. Okay, more or less it's a practical oriented standard. Again, the scope is pretty vast. You can expect even a one marker question from this topic. We have such adjustments also. If you want even a 20 marker question also can get asked directly. That wala questions are also there. So that means the length of this particular chapter is quite on the side. It has a broad range. How many marks it generally comes for is around 10 to 12 marks is what we see. But this time around due to the new pattern where we it fits in, we'll see. Okay. For that is not our headache. Our headache is what now? To learn the topics, whatever it is. How it's going to get asked and all is our job. Now our job is just to write and clear the examination. So we'll focus more towards the learning. And uh, at the end, I'll see if Institute has given any guidance with respect to the, the marking, the weightage of each chapter. It was there for the old syllabus. For the new syllabus, the way I've seen, it is not yet released. If it is released, I'll share the document with you. Even, the, even for the recorded guys, I'll put it up on the app itself if it comes. Otherwise, let's wait. I think normally maybe by February, you can expect a notification from the institute in this regard. Before that, if it comes, I'll let you know. For now, don't focus too much on the marks as such. Okay, sir. So coming back to the topic, cash flow statement. So the cash here refers to, for this particular accounting three, uh, AS3 perspective, cash here refers to both cash in hand as well as cash at bank. Cash here refers to cash in hand as well as cash at bank. That's your cash. Pretty self-explanatory. So if you have money in your savings bank account or anything on your current account, etc, etc, even that will be considered as what, sir? Cash for AS3 purpose. Done? Okay, the next aspect is what? What the hell is this? Cash equivalent. So name itself saying cash equivalent. So it is not cash, but it is almost equal to cash. Sir, cash equivalent simply means it's an investment. What did I say? Cash equivalent is investment. It should be a highly liquid investment. A highly liquid investment. Maybe it's no need to write down. It's given. I'm just writing it down for the sake of explanation. A highly liquid investment with a maturity period of less than three months. Meaning if you buy it today, you should sell off or you should dispose of this investment within three months. Such were, so That is the first characteristic of what? Cash equivalent. One, it should be highly liquid with a maturity term of less than three months. And it should be readily convertible into known amounts of cash. Readily convertible into known amount of cash. Meaning if you sell this investment, approximately how much cash you're going to get, no? You should be able to find out that. 
not with precision you should be able to approximate it hmm? so it should be a readily convertible into known amounts of cash meaning how much when you sell how much money you're going to receive you should be able to find and three it should have insignificant it should have insignificant value change risk it should have insignificant value change risk meaning its value should not fluctuate too much its value should not fluctuate too much Sir, I'll give you an egg. I mean, matlab, I'll quote, uh, I'll give you a scenario. You tell me whether that investment is cash equivalent or not. I purchased Wipro ka shares. I purchased Wipro ka equity shares. I purchased it today. I want to sell it in the next two months. I want to hold it, hold it only for two months. Is Wipro ka shares, for me, it's an investment. For me, that's an investment. Is that investment a cash equivalent? for AS3 purpose. Read this once again and everyone answer. Is it a cash equivalent or not a cash equivalent? Not a cash equivalent. Huh? Why? Yeah. Sir, though the maturity term is less than three months, what criteria it is failing is insignificant value change risk. Sir, if I buy some company ka equity shares after one week or one month, its value could be up by 20% or it could also be down by 20 30 percent also that means the value change risk is small or it's quite big right. for you to call a component as a cash equivalent that value change risk should not be significant meaning it should not fluctuate too much but equity shares by default its values of its its default its value flux fluctuates too much that's the reason equity investments we don't categorize categorize it as a cash equivalent same goes for your cryptocurrency if you are investing in any Cryptocurrency that is even BAP, no? Yes, correct. Equity to at least is reasonable. Crypto can one day only can go 20 30 percent up, one day also full Diwali. Yeah, that can also happen, right? So, something an investment who which value fluctuates too much is not considered as cash and cash equivalent. So, that means which investment can be cash equivalent, sir? Bill of exchange you could treat it, or normally what we invest is we normally don't invest in bill of exchange and banks do that. That's all. No, as a normal you and I don't invest in bill of exchange, right? We can buy government ka bonds, RBI ka bonds, central government ka bonds, etc, etc. Can you buy? That value fluctuates too much, sir, or it is pretty stable. stable. So those investments, you can treat it as what? Cash equivalent for AS3 perspective. So now we understood totally what is cash and what is cash and cash equivalent, everybody? No problem. Mutual funds are also no because uh, equity mutual funds are no debt mutual funds could be because equity mutual funds fluctuate too much in value so we don't consider it as like that etf also exchange traded funds etf anything related to shares is not considered as a cash and cash equal if you are investing in debt instruments could be considered hmm? okay let's go one step back again sir what is the topic name cash flow statement it is backed by which accounting standard accounting standard three so this covers only cash coming in or cash in cash equivalent also. It captures the inflow and outflow of cash as well as cash equivalents. Cash we know, cash for this purpose means cash in hand as well as cash at bank. Cash equivalent for this purpose means what? Those investments, it should be highly liquid. One is maturity should be less than three months. Meaning if you buy it today, you should sell it off within three months. Next. It should be readily convertible into known amounts of cash. Meaning by selling it, how much value you're going to get, you should be able to approximate it. Third one, its value should not change too much or significant. That's all. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. We, we generally don't invest in any bill receivable and all. Banks do that. Forget about that. Now. Yes. So can I come back to this people? Sir, this inflow and outflow of cash, no, sir, we capture under three categories or three buckets. This inflow and outflow we capture under three buckets. Those buckets or headers are cash flow from operating activity, cash flow from investing activity, cash flow from financing activity. That's all. We capture this information under three buckets, operating, investing and finance. That's all you have to do with. This is a very, very simple topic if you ask me. It could go a little lengthy. But if you are someone who's going to mug up, no, then cash flow could be your nightmare, worst nightmare. 
because in some adjustments we'll be adding, we'll be subtracting, some adjustments we'll be ignoring, etc. etc. If you understand it, cash flow statement is not literally child's play. Because 90% of the answer is there in the question itself. Some few components will be missing, which may we may have to put up a ledger and find it out. It could be lengthy, but uh, the as far as the complexity goes, it is pretty less. That's what I feel. But uh, let's do a few problems and then you can tell me how good or bad you're feeling about this particular topic. Okay. So now, sir, first but bucket. What is the first bucket or header I told? Cash flow from operating activities. Sir, name itself is saying operating activities. What is the operating cash flow? Can you give me some examples of operating cash flow? What does any business do? First, tell me that maybe. Main activities of any business is what? Purchase the goods and sell the goods. Relating to those, can you think of any cash information? One, purchase. Cash purchase. Cash purchase is an example of operating cash flow. Is it necessary? It has to be a cash purchase or it could it also be a credit purchase. Yeah. Credit purchase also. Can you purchase on credit and forget about it or you have to pay the creditors? So payment made to creditors is part of your operating cash flow. So cash purchase, cash paid to creditors. The opposite is what? Cash sales and cash received from debtors. An example of operating cash flow. Yes. Electricity paid, rent paid, your expenses paid, employee ka salary paid, all that are part of your operation. Anything that is part of your operation through which you are getting some cash or you are paying some cash comes under operating cash. Fee. Is this okay, sir? Lot of examples, one by one we'll see. I'm just giving, discussing a few things with you to get started with the problems. So far, all of us are good and are on the same page. Yes, so this is an example of operating cash flow. What is the second bucket, sir? Cash flow from investing activity. So you think where and all can you invest within the organization? Not outside. Where and all can you invest within the organization? Look around you and tell. Perfect. An organization to survive or to run their operation, they need fixed assets. We don't call it as fixed asset anymore. We call them as property, plant and equipment. So PP purchased is what activity? is an investing activity you will only purchase or you could also sell it some assets if it gets worn out we may have to sell it and replace it with a new one so pp purchase is an investing activity similarly fixed asset or pp sold is also investing activity i'm just giving you some example of investing cash flows then you can only buy pp or can you also purchase intangible assets so intangible assets like your patents, license, etc. Whatever you have purchased. Intangible asset purchased. Intangible asset sold. Is an example of again investing cash flows. Okay. Now this is the investment within the organization. If you have surplus money, what you will do? Invest outside. That is you will buy some other company ka shares or you can buy some other company ka equity shares or preference shares or debentures. So investment in other company ka equity shares, preference shares, debentures is an example of what activity? Investing activity. Just you will buy and forget or you may also sell them. So sale of such investment in equity shares of another company is also a investing activity. So if you buy some other company ka equity shares or preference shares, what are you going to receive periodically? Dividend. So dividend received is an example of what activity? If investment purchased is an investing activity means the dividend received on such investment also is an investing activity. Suppose you buy some other company got debentures, then are you going to get dividend or are you going to receive interest? So if debenture purchased as an investment as an investing activity means the interest received on such instrument is also investing activity. These are quickly some example. Again, quickly, what is that? PP purchased, PP sold. Intangible asset purchased, intangible asset sold. Investment purchased, investment sold. Interest received, dividend received. These are some common examples. I'm not giving you an exhaustive list. I'm just giving you one indicative list. You may get more examples also in the problem, but these are some things which you probably see in almost every problem. Hmm? So investing bucket is done. What is the third bucket, sir? Cash flow from 
financing activity no need to write down anything this whole chapter we're going to be doing this soon just listen that's good enough good enough and then we will dive into the problems the third header is cash flow from financing activity sir think where and all can a company raise its finance or how and all can a company raise its finance <laughs> issue of shares company if they need money they may issue equity shares so issue of equity shares is what activity financing activity can you just issue them or can you also buy them back so the issue of equity shares is finance activity means buyback of equity shares is also financing activity that's all no you can also issue preference shares. so issue of preference shares is also financing activity can you just issue or can you also cancel them cancel them cancellation of preference shares we call it as what what words do we use redemption redemption of preference shares is also financing activity or you can issue debentures and you can redeem debentures that is also financing activity or you can take conventional bank loan so bank loan taken bank loan repaid again is an example of financing activity sir if you are if you have issued equity shares or preference shares what i what is the company going to give to the shareholders dividend so dividend paid is what activity financing activity if issue of equity shares or preference shares is financing activity the dividend paid on such instrument is also financing activity so if you have taken a bank loan or if you have issued debentures then what is the company expected to pay interest so interest paid is also a financing activity these are some things which we again normally encounter in most of the problems that's all any doubt till here anybody or can i proceed further Don't worry about financial assets and all. That is not there in your CA intermediate. You learn it in India as one zero nine CA fine. Hmm? Good that you are able to, you are seen that somewhere, but not required at this level. Hmm? Others ignore. You learn that next level. Hmm? Okay. Can I move on to the next one, people? All right, sir. What is the first bucket I told? First bucket is what? Operating cash. Operating cash flows. Yes. to find out operating cash flow no, sir so we have two methods to find out operating cash flow we have two methods first is the direct method another one is the indirect method this is not methods to prepare cash flow statement this is method only to do what sir to find out ocf ocf andre operating cash flow. to find operating cash flow either you have a direct method or you have an indirect method. financing cash flow and investing cash flow there is no method that is common only for the first bucket we have the two methods we'll work out problem relating to the direct method as well as we'll work out problems relating to indirect method also hmm? first we will go to the direct method then we will dive into the indirect and don't worry about the pointers if you want here also no i think uh, first two three pages you leave it blank i'll give you some pointers may not be immediately may maybe for the direct method you need don't need some pointers for indirect method maybe you would require so three to four pages you can leave it blank okay if if at all i'm giving you some points then i'll take not every a chapter need not have some points only for few topics which are little lengthy or which have a lot lot more concepts i may dictate some pointers for you hmm? all right So can we dive into the first one? First sector is what, sir? To find out operating cash flow under direct method. Just give me one minute. Directly we'll go, or I'll we'll learn this with the help of a question itself. Hang on, I'll tell you the question. Come to question number four. We'll do something different today. We'll start with homework. Question number three is homework. A lot of similar questions are there. So as I told you, right? All the study material question are brought in. Only those which are little different we will solve. Those which are very very repetitive, I will give it off as homework. You go through that. Hmm? For now, we'll start with question number four. We'll start with this. Sir, we are doing direct method. The name itself is saying direct method. Again, can you tell me, sir? Uh, can you tell me some of the examples of operating cash flows again? Operating cash flow ka cash purchases. Cash paid to creditors, cash sales, cash received from debtors, expenses paid, all your operating expenses like salary, rent, etc., etc., all those. 
sir if those information if these cash flow information if it is a directly given to you in the question if those informations are directly given then we will use direct method if those are missing then we go for indirect method so in some problems they will only mention direct method indirect method some they may not mention i'll, I'll tell you how to identify that also one simple way now is what sir if these information this operating cash flow or whatever we discuss now if those informations are directly given to us in the question we will go for direct method otherwise indirect method. Hmm? your friend said indirect method bit tricky ah send your throw your friend out <laughs> yeah no worry about your friend we'll worry about our sets okay let uh, today's session pass by then you let me know how it is where we stand etc etc don't worry we have enough number of questions again i think 20 plus questions we are solving not required actually cash flow statement no i can take you through one question all adjustment two hours cup roll okay we can finish three hours also we can do it okay but uh, it will not serve the purpose maybe we can try to do that on the last day we can revise like that with the help of one problem Okay, maybe we'll start little slow, slow, slow problems, man. Keep an open mind. It's a very easy topic if you ask me. Anyways, I'll leave the judgments to you. Hmm? Perception and all is yours, no? Let me not interfere there. So come to question number four, people. The following summary cash account has been extracted from the accounting record. Ante. Okay, some cash information they've given. Sir, I will read out the information. You will guide me what sort of cash flow is this. If it is operating cash flow, say operating or type O. If it's investing cash flow type I, if it is financing activity ka cash flow type yeah. F. Hmm? Okay. And one more thing, sir. Sir, accounts have debit bal debit side and credit side. A ledger account will have a debit side and credit side. Is a cash flow statement a ledger account or a statement? statement. It's a statement. Correct. A statement will have debit or credit or only plus minuses. A statement will always only have a plus and a minus. So in cash flow statement, if you have inflows, no? if you have cash coming in, we denote it as a positive number plus. If it's a cash going out, we denote it as a negative number. That's all. All right, people. Okay. If you want that also, you can type. If, if you think it's an operating cash flow minus, you can write O minus. Like, I mean, you can tell it out here. Hmm? Okay. I'll, I mean, check this. Balance as on 1st March. And then they've given balance as on 31st March. I think we need to prepare cash flow statement only for one month. They have given one month data, maybe March month. Ka. If you just check, they have given first March ka opening balance and 31st March. Ka. So this is opening balance and the last line is the closing balance. So statement you can prepare for one day also, one month also, whatever it is. But statement is a true only for that particular date. If you prepare cash flow statement today, it is true only for today like that. Hmm? Okay. Or they give oh, oh i didn't see the years no no problem then they have given opening balance at the year beginning and closing balance at year no problem i thought opening one month ka data looks like it is one year ka data someone told it is 20x1 here and it is 20x2 there hmm? maybe then this should be a typo this should not be first march it should have been first april oh, mother body let's ignore hmm? okay i'll study material question okay receipt from customers no problem, no problem. It's all right. Don't worry about the years. No. That is anyway not the muddha. Receipt from customers. Customer is our data, sir. What sort of activity? Operating, oh, investing okay. or financing? Perfect. O minus or O plus? O plus. Greater. You're not telling your blood group, no? Hmm. Issue of uh, share. Sir, issue of shares is a way of raising finance. Sir, when the company issues shares, they pay the money or they receive the money? So this is what? This is F. Plus, sale of fixed asset. Fixed. Sir, fixed asset is an investment. Fixed asset purchased as well as fixed asset sold is what activity? It's an investing activity. And when you sell the asset, you will receive the money. So, this is I plus. Perfect. Payment to suppliers. Suppliers is our creditors. Creditors are part of our day-to-day -day operations. So, creditor ka payment is what? operating activity and cash is going out so it is o minus awesome payments for property plan and equipment you have purchased a pp pp purchased and payment made is what activity it's an investing activity and cash is coming in or cash is going out cash is going out so it is i minus payment of overheads sir overheads is an indirect cost 
they are also necessary for our operations hmm? they are also necessary for our operations this is nothing but your indirect cost maybe you'll learn more about this in your costing topic hmm? this is also part of our operations so anything which is part of our operations is what sir o and cash is going out so it is o minus wages and salary again part of our operations so o minus taxation taxation sir tax could be anything tax paid could be either operating or investing or finance because you have your already tax is already over you have studied uh, business and profession also you paid some tax correct you calculated even capital gains also add a different tax yes so tax no sir it depends if they give you business and profession wala tax you will consider it under operating activity meaning you show tax under operating activity suppose they told it's a capital gain tax ltcg or stcg long term capital gain or short term capital gain you sold some asset and you are paying some ltcg then sale of asset is an investing activity so tax paid on that also becomes investing activity so tax could be anything check the information and accordingly decode okay like dividend paid is what activity dividend paid dividend you are paying because you have issued shares so issue of shares is what activity financing activity so dividend paid is also financing activity on that dividend paid if any tax is getting attracted which we call it as a dividend distribution tax or corporate dividend tax since dividend paid is a financing activity dividend distribution tax is also financing activity these days it's removed it's all right it's abolished basically it's not in the hands of receiver but just see but taxation could be anything sir if they just give the word taxation in the problem always put it under operating act okay because the majorly the tax which you pay to the government will be related to your core operations hence if they don't give any other extra information we show tax under operating activity it's here have they told any information looks like within the table no at least we'll read outside if we get any information we'll use that otherwise we'll show it under operating, operating activity it's great so dividend all these are payments sir. all these are payments so dividend paid this is okay so dividend paid is what activity financing. a financing activity so f minus lastly repayment of bank loan sir bank loan taken is a way of raising finance bank loan repaid is also a financing activity only so this is also f minus that's also prepare cash flow statement as on for the year ended 31st march in accordance with accounting standard three that's all this information we have to whatever we studied now we have to put it under one statement that's all such a nice problem no don't expect all this in examination just the starting that's all okay to start the topic these are all there lollipop and all too much this is too much lollipop very very doubtful little bit adjustments they will give you hmm? but nonetheless can we do it the company does not have any cash equivalent they are only saying great so on format i will show it to you write down ah uh, matlab i'll stick to the what's the name of the company have they told x ah hill la huh? okay cash flow statement cash flow statement of hills limited as on which date are we preparing for as on 31st march 20x2 so there are multiple presentation approach some of them will have two amounts column some of them will have only particulars and amount i'd like to stick to only one why they'll have two amounts column is one amount column they'll use for calculation another amount column it's your outer amount or main amount column i'll stick to this one only i'll have only two columns particulars and amount if you want to change the presentation and have two amounts column also it is absolutely all right hmm? can we start people oh, okay first one roman letter one what is the first heading of, or first bucket of cash flow from operating activities cash flow from operating activities so the way you should solve cash flow statement problems in examination is you should first have the format like operating cash flow have that format leave 8 to 10 lines because generally operating cash flow is not one header which will have which will have maximum adjustment okay you can leave 8 to 10 lines you can be a little dharala prabhu there it's all right trees are anywhere cut 
सो यू कॉन्ट अडॉप्ट गो ग्रीन अप्रोच दे एंड द सी ए पेपर का जनरली आई थिंक इट्स वॉट थर्टी टू पेजेस और समथिंग आई आई फॉर गट अबाउट द नंबर ऑफ दिस थिंग टोटल ओके सो चांसेस ऑफ वी यूजिंग दैट पेपर एंसर शीट फुल्ली और ऑल्सो प्रिटी लेस ओनली फ्यू ऑफ दम एंड अप यूजिंग इट दे आर हैंड रेटिंग little motha motha and a little lengthy they they end up probably using all the sheets additional sheets are pretty rare okay fine so don't have to worry you can spacing you don't have to worry hmm? and then what you can do is and then we basically first have operating cash flow leave some lines and then have a format for investing cash flow leave some lines and have a format for financing cash flow that way what happens you don't have to read the question again and again as and when you read the question directly you can go into the format and Log off. Dom. That way, this question can be answered within the particular time. Hmm? Answering within the time also could could be one of the crux when it comes to the cash flow statement. I'll do a thing. I'll have a bigger column because I'm a little lazy. So that next also it should come in handy, you know. So you can leave only some six or seven lines, or you can wait and then write. One second. Okay. Maybe I'll have it here. Cash flow from what is the second bucket, people? Cash flow from investing activities. Okay, I'll leave some eight to ten lines, maybe. Then go for cash flow from. That much is adjustments are not there here. I'm only leaving for the next problem, people. Hmm? Cash flow from financing activity. If you are worried about spacing, you can look at the solution. That has how many lines exactly? Oh, hmm? okay. Maybe I'll write it here. Net cash flow from operating activities. Net cash flow from operating activities. I'll call this as A. then i'll write here net cash flow from from investing activities net cash flow from investing activities which i'm going to call it as b and then net cash flow from financing activity i'm going to call it as c This is the format I'm doing. Don't worry about it. Then opening cash and only cash or cash and cash equivalents. Last me, you need to take opening cash and cash equivalents. And then finally, you should be able to get closing cash and cash equivalents. Okay, this is a format. Okay, let's go and start plugging in the data one by one now. We already identified everything, no? Okay, first, sir, opening cash, sir, opening balance. Okay, leave that or else receipt from customers. We already wrote it is an operating cash flow. Come to operating cash flow. Have they told all the amounts are in thousands, lakhs? Yeah, here they saying all the amounts are in thousands. Okay, first is uh, how much? What is that? Receipt from customers. Receipts from customers under operating activity, and that receipt happens to be two seven eight three. Sir, if it is cash coming in, we write it as a positive number. Cash going out, a negative number. So this is the receipt. So positive. Okay. Next is what issue of shares. Sir, issue of shares is a way of raising finance. So where I should put this under financing activity? Come to financing activity and write issue of shares. And how much money? Did the company receive by issuing the shares? Three hundred plus or minus? Plus because when the company issues shares, they will receive the money. Great. No, one second. Hmm. Okay. Next is what, sir? Sale of fixed asset. Purchase of fixed asset as well as sale of fixed asset. What sort of activity? Investing activity. Come under investing activity and write sale of fixed assets. If they use the term fixed assets, you can, but most probably they'll use the term property, plant, and equipment. 
So sale of fixed asset, it's a positive number or negative number? Positive. Because when you sell, you're going to receive the money. Next one. Payment to supplier. Suppliers is our creditors. Creditors is part of our operations. So come under operating activity and write payment to suppliers. Payment to suppliers and that payment is 2047. This 2047 a positive number or negative number? Negative number. By the way, which method is this cash flow statement under? Direct method. Why, sir? Because all these information, this is from customer, payment to creditors, etc., etc., is straight away given to us in the question. That's the reason we are adopting direct method. First uh, four or five problems will be revolving around the direct method. Then we will dive into the indirect method. Okay, next, after that, what it is? Payments for property plan and equipment. So, payments for PP means it's PP purchased. Sir, PP purchase is what activity? Investing. investing activity. Come under investing activity and write payments for property plan and equipment, and that payment is 230. Positive or negative? Negative. negative. All of us are there on the same page, no? Anyone lagging behind? Anyone wants me to wait or move on, G? Okay. Next, payment of overheads. Overhead is also an indirect expenditure which is necessary for our operation itself. So, even overhead ka payment is what activity? Operating. In payment for overhead as well as wages for salary. Both are in, under operating activity only. So, we'll write update both payment for overheads 100 and 115. Huh? Okay, and then we have wages and a salary ka payment. Okay, that is also negative 69. Okay, next is your access. Sir, we read the question. Did we find out any extra information pertaining to tax or just taxation? Just if they give you taxation, where will you put the taxation uh, payment under? Under operating activity itself. So right here itself. Taxation generally we put it under the last. I think here we no, no more have any operating cash flow. So right taxation. How much is our taxation paid? Liability paid? 243. Under operating activity itself, taxation of 243 happens to be a negative. Okay, next to... Dividend. Again, all these are not dividend received. All these are payments now. Here onwards, the payment has started. Okay. So, it's a dividend paid. So, dividend paid where it will come under? Financing activity. So, under financing activity, write a dividend paid and that dividend paid amount is 80. Positive, negative. Negative. Okay. Anything else, Saru? Repayment of bank loan. So, bank loan taken as well as the bank loan repaid. Both are what? financing activity so repayment of bank loan is also a financing activity and that repayment is 250 so that is negative anything else there sir oh, that's all that's all so what is the last line or here i've written is sir you'll have various operating cash flows no? right sum up everything this is all your operating activity ka cash flow can you add everything for me and tell me how much is that added number huh? 309. 309. 309. Plus or minus? Plus. Plus. That 309, no, we call it as net cash flow from operating activity. Meaning through our operation totally, how much? In fact, one second. Uh, one second instead of this. It's okay. You can leave it. I'll maybe modify this. Mm, yeah. Sometimes what happens, you could get negative also. So I'll just change it for the sake of format or actually in this next next only I'll modify the words. Net cash flow from operating activity. 309 positive people? Yes. Okay. If you get negative, use a different terminology. We call it used. That's all right. Leave that. Maybe I'll modify it later. Similarly, investing activity ka cash flow, you sum it up, sir. Positive or negative? Negative. negative. How much negative? 102. 
one zero two negative. Sir, if it is negative, we don't call it as net cash flow from. We call it as net cash flow used. Net cash flow used. If you want, you can write this word also. I'll modify it in the next problem. It's not coming. You can write the presentation like this. We generally present it like this. Net cash flow. If it's positive number, we call it as from. Or if it's a negative number, we can write used in investing activity. Net cash flow from slash used. So this is one zero two negative. Similarly, uh, financing activity. Ka, can you sum it up? Tell me what it is. Negative three zero. Uh. Okay, negative means is it cash flow from or cash flow used in? Net cash flow used in. And I don't have space. I'll just directly write that used in financing activity negative thirty. So that is your total cash flows. Now sum up everything. A plus B plus C U. All the three activities ka net cash flow you add. That oh I didn't write that line. Huh? No crap. One second. I'll try to bring it down if I'm if possible. Try to add up everything, sir. What are you getting? That. A addition we call it as net increase slash decrease in cash and cash equivalents. Net increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents. We'll call it as A plus B plus C one seventy positive negative. All the three cash flows ka addition basically. Hmm. This net increase ka if you add opening balance compulsorily you should get. Uh, Closing balance. Otherwise, somewhere you have, we have done something wrong. So that way, cash flow statement has an answer as well as it has the question together. Hmm? Do you know opening cash and cash equivalent? Yes. yes. Opening balance is thirty five. Sir, thirty five plus one seventy seven euro. How much you getting? Two one two. So these two, if you add, you should you are getting. We are getting two one two, and the two one two has to be closing cash balance. Is it? Yes. If it matches, that means it looks like we are on the right track, or maybe we have done the things. Correctly. Otherwise, you can just check somehow some positive, negative. Generally, here the common mistakes which many of the many of us do here is the signs, especially the negative we forget. It's not that we don't know of; it is just me, Josh, Josh me. We forget the negative signs. That's one of the common errors or arithmetical error that could happen in this particular topic. So just watch out for that. Over, sir. Copying, sir. Next problem, sir. What, sir? Next problem, ah. Online also unanimously everybody okay so far. All okay na, great. Someone who said wants to update. Which portion you want me to update? Anything you want me to show? Others can go through question number five in the meantime. Simple and correct it is. Question number five is what you can go through. Hmm. Done, no? Great, sir. You go through one second. I'll just modify this.
Hmm, doing ah. Huh? Hmm, I hope the problem only. Yes. Okay. Next, which was the question I told people? Question five. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Part a part we'll see. Prepare cash flow statement of Messrs. M N T Limited for the year ended thirty first March two zero X one with the help of following information. Company sold goods for cash only. G P. Listen to this, people. Gross profit was thirty percent for the year. Sir, they have told thirty percent. That thirty percent is on cost or is on sales. sales. G P. They told us thirty percent. Is it on cost or sales? sales? Sir, if it is cost, clearly they will specify. If they just say G P is twenty percent, thirty percent, the G P percentage is always on sales. Okay, just a convention. Nothing, no logic or anything of that sort. If they just mention percentage, it is always to be applied on sales. Great. Sir, do you know G P in the current year? Yeah, how much is that G P? Three eighty two. Fine. Sir, with this, can you find out sales? Yes. Sir, G P is thirty percent of sales. Correct. That means G P amount is given means can't we find out sales? So one working note, we'll put it up here. Maybe. If required. Working note number one is to find out the sales. Or can I specifically call it as cash sale in this problem? Because first adjustment me, what did they say? Twelve sir, company sold only for cash only. So is there any credit sale? Okay. So G P is equal to thirty percent of sales and G P is how much? Three lakh eighty two thousand five hundred. Three lakh eighty two five hundred is equal to thirty percent of sales. Therefore, what is sales? Three eighty two five hundred divided by thirty percent, which is point three. Twelve lakh seventy. Twelve lakh seventy five thousand is your cash sales. Okay. So check the problem. Have they given all the information? I think this is also direct method. Leave it. It's okay. All the information will be given to you. Okay. So as and when we read the data, is it okay? Can we directly go into the format and plug it in the interest of time? Yes. Hmm? So where will cash sale come under? Under operating activities. So I have the format. If you want, you can make the format. Just the naming and question numbers you can change. And this is which company, sir? This is question number five and cash flow statement of Messrs. M and T. Yeah. And uh, which particular uh, date are we preparing this for? Thirty first March two zero X one. If you want, you can tick also. It's not necessary that everything you have to do it. I know that many of you already have done this topic in a B com also. If you want, you can use that tick approach. If you have, that is your call. Writing, you write as much as practice that you need of. Or if you feel you are a person whose writing speed is pretty slow, then you need to. Write more often to increase that writing speed. Hmm? Others, I'll leave it to you. Your call. First, sir, cash sales where it come under? So cash sales working note number one, and that amount was how much you told? Twelve, twelve lakh seventy five thousand. Awesome. Under operating activity, positive number we have already updated. All right. Next, sir, opening inventory was lesser than closing inventory by thirty-five thousand. Sir, if you are doing under direct method, do I need opening stock? Do I need closing stock and all that drum? If I am doing direct method, only information I need to know with respect to stock. What information of cash I need to know with respect to stock, sir? One is with respect to sales, which I have already got. Another information is with respect to cash purchases or cash paid to. Creditors, yes or no? Opening stock could be one lakh more, or it could be ten lakh more. Do we show that under direct method? What we show under direct method is only cash purchase, cash paid to creditor, cash sale, cash received from debtor. So that means all this information is given to you just to deviate, deviate and waste your time. So all these are faultu information. We can cut it off. We will not worry about those. Okay, sir. J. Move on to the next one. Ah. Wages paid during the year four ninety to five hundred. Wages paid is part of our operations. Ah, where will it come under? Operating. operating. Come to operating activity and write wages paid, and that payment is four. Four ninety to five hundred. Plus or minus? 
minus so why we ignore that entry opening stock is irrelevant for direct method we don't show any direct method because how will sir how will stock come sir how will stock be created only when you purchase the goods you will get stock yes or no so when you capture purchase information automatically even stock information also is updated so that's the reason we are not preparing p and l or balance sheet we are preparing what cash flow statement so keep that in mind so as far as cash flow statement is concerned we only want cash coming in and cash going out so inventory gets created only when you purchase the goods or inventory gets reduced only when you sell the goods so purchase and sale if you capture that is good enough hmm? sir how we directly identify direct i'll tell you that for now it's all right when i come to indirect method because for you to identify something you should have a clarity regarding both i think we have a little bit clarity around now direct method but have we studied indirect method now not yet so i'll tell you one quick step is also there i'll tell you but hang on when we start indirect method then i'll tell you hmm? no worry that confusion and all you will not have any examination hmm? for now you could have put it on hold for the time next office and uh, selling expense paid during the year 75000 sir this office expense and all is part of our operations so office and selling expenditure how much is that 75000 also will come under operating cash flow itself Okay, what is the next information? Dividend paid 30,000. So, dividend you pay because company would have issued some shares. Maybe in the current year or maybe in the last year. That is irrelevant for us. But current year, have you paid dividend? Yes. So, dividend paid is what activity? A financing activity. Come under financing activity and write dividend paid. And how much is that dividend paid? 30,000. Plus or minus? Minus. minus. So, par de par. Next, bank loan repaid 2,15,000 including interest. So, it doesn't matter, sir. Bank loan paid as well as interest paid. Both are what? Financing activity. If you want, you can show it separately. Ideally, it should have been shown separately. But anyway, our mother body has a club. If you want, you can club also. It's all right. In my opinion, it's better to show it separately. But here, it's all right. So, what are they saying it as? Bank loan repaid bank loan repaid is also a financing activity and that re total repayment including interest comes up to 215 so in that 2 lakh 15000 payment 15000 is towards interest 2 lakh is probably towards principal both are financing activity itself carry on okay next one Trade payable as on 31st March 20x0. Sir, hang on, sir. We are preparing cash flow statement for the year ended. 31st March 20x1. So, that means, can you tell me what is current year? Whole year of, of current year? 1st April 20x0 to 31st March 20x1. I, to, I think you are comfortable with that X approach now. You can substitute. If you are still having confusion, you can substitute X with 2. So, it is 31st, if your year is ending on 31st March 2021, it has to start on 1st April 2020. But don't write 2020 in exam, always write X only the way they have given. So, till you get that understanding, you can substitute X with 2. Hmm? Okay. Uh, so, they have told trade payable on 31st March 20X0. So, 31st March 20X0 uh, means it is closing balance or... In fact, it is last year ka. Because current year is ending on 31st March 20X1. They gave 31st March 20X0. 31st March 20X0 is last year ka. Last year ka closing balance becomes current year ka. Opening, opening balance. So, I think they are talking something about opening balance. Trade payable ka or can I say like this? Trade payable ka opening balance exceeded 31st March 20X1. So, 31st March 20X1 is CB as in closing balance. So, they are saying opening balance of creditors is more by closing balance by 25,000. Again, opening balance greater than closing balance by 35. Tell me, do I need opening balance of creditors uh, for our cash flow statement or cash paid to creditor? 
as per as direct method is concerned i want cash payment to creditor if suppose cash payment to creditors is given to you in the question is this information relevant or irrelevant if they have given cash payment to creditor means that means this information becomes nonsense irrelevant yes or no if they don't give maybe we have to prepare creditors ka ledger and try to find out cash paid to creditor as a balancing figure we will see for now let this put it on put put on hold and read the very next adjustment in fact amount paid to trade payments how much 4 lakh 60 during the year we paid 460 to creditors now you tell me the above information which is there in point number 8 relevant or nonsense not relevant yes can i cut this off then so we want amount paid to trade payable how much is that amount paid to trade payable where it will come under perfect amount paid to creditors is part of our operation so amount paid to trade payables which is 4 lakh 60000 hmm what you need for cash flow statement is amount paid to creditor if amount paid to creditor is given means opening balance of creditor may be greater than closing balance by 50000 1 lakh whatever they are just giving a comparison between opening balance and closing balance meaning they are saying if closing balance of creditor closing balance you are you write it on the credit side no if closing balance is 1 lakh means they are saying opening balance is saying more or less opening balance exceeded okay that means they are saying opening balance will be 1 25000 more than this number this will be 125 they have established a relationship between opening balance and closing balance i don't need that for cash flow statement as far as cash flow statement is concerned i need only cash paid to creditors anyway next line only they told how much cash is paid to creditor hence the above information becomes not relevant okay now ma all right next one tax paid during the year amounts to 65000 provision for tax as on 31st march 2000 x1 is 45 sir provision means tax paid or tax estimated to be paid estimated. provision is an estimate first you will make the estimate and then you will pay so you tell me for cash flow statement perspective i need provision for tax or i need tax paid i need a provision for tax data or tax paid data tax paid data here provision is 45 tax paid is 65 which you will take for a direct method you will take the actual tax paid which is how much 65000 hmm? provision is nothing but it's an estimated tax to be paid okay provision uh, tax paid where it will come sir they if they don't give any further information tax paid we put it generally as a convention under operating activity the last adjustment generally is related to taxation hmm? in fact last but one okay so taxation paid how much is that taxation paid sir 65000 so this is negative okay anything else is there investment of 7 lakh was sold during the year at a profit of 20000 sir investment we are showing currently at 7 lakh did we sell it yes when you sold you made a profit of 20000 means what is your sale value book value or in your books you are showing the asset at 7 lakh and you made profit means that means obviously you have sold it at a higher than 7 lakh value or lower higher what is your sale value 7 lakh plus 20000 so your sale value is 7 point 7 lakh worth of investment you sold it for 7.2 that's the reason you ended up making 20000 rupees profit So for cash flow statement is concerned I want the book value of the asset or I want the sale value of the asset For cash flow statement we want either cash coming in or cash going out So what cash came in is with respect to the sale value and not with respect to the book value So I'm interested in 7.2 and where should the investment sold data be captured under which header Sale of investment is in investing activity so we'll simply write here sale of investment no need to put up a separate working note and all here only you can show 7 lakh plus 20000 and your sale value finally comes up to 7 lakh 20000 next one sir okay what is the next one 
depreciation on fixed asset so do i want depreciation sir is depreciation a cash expenditure or a non cash expenditure oh. non cash will you if your depreciation is 85000 will you give cash 85000 to somebody else no so depreciation is non cash does it affect our direct method no as far as direct method is concerned in fact uh, as far as cash flow statement is concerned we only want to know fixed asset purchased fixed asset sold so depreciation is irrelevant for me hmm? okay plant and machinery purchased data is that relevant yes you purchased plant and machinery for how much value 250 sir purchase of machinery what kind of activity so under investing activity right purchase of plant and machinery which is 7 lakh or rather 2 lakh 50000 purchase of pp is inflow or outflow outflow so negative any other data or that's all then they give cash and cash equivalent on 31st march 20x0 sir our year is ending on 31st march 20x1 they have given 31st march 20x0 ka balance so what is this opening, opening balance. balance and they have given cash and cash equivalent on 31st march 20x1 what is this now the cb as in closing balance so we have a separate category for opening and closing can we capture them <coughs> opening cash balance is 2 lakh first maybe we'll capture opening and then we'll see whether are we getting closing all the information we have captured add everything people add operating cash flow ka all the cash flows you had and tell me whether it is positive or negative positive of 182500 is positive under operating cash flow if it is positive then it is a cash flow generated from operating activity if it is negative that much got used in that operating activity that's all similarly what is the net cash flow from investing activity summation of these two 4 lakh 70000 positive okay this is also positive lastly is net cash flow from financing activity only these two or actually amount i wrote it in the outer column so this is 30000 negative and this is 2 lakh 15000 negative If you add these two, you are getting two lakh forty five thousand negative. Okay, that means this is the cash flow used in financing activity. All the three activity ka cash flow you added up, people A plus B plus C, whatever I have circled there. Four zero seven five positive negative positive. So you are getting four zero seven five hundred positive, and you already had a cash at the year beginning of two lakh. So two lakh you had at year beginning through all your activity you generated a further cash of four lakh. That means at the end of the year you should be left with six zero seven five hundred. As per our statement, this is what we are getting. What does the question say? The closing balance is six zero seven five. So looks like we have done everything. Correct. That's it. Can you uh, be a little, little louder, please? Second entry, I, I unitary method essence. You got to be a little more specific. My knowledge is very limited. <laughs> sure. Uh, GP is thirty percent of sales. They told if they just give percentage, it is always on sales. So GP is thirty percent of sales. Do you know the GP ka amount? Yes, three lakh eighty two five hundred. So three lakh eighty two five hundred is your GP. That is thirty percent of sales means sales. Sales you can treat it as X. Thirty percent of X. Therefore, what will be X? X will be three lakh eighty two five hundred divided by thirty percent, or thirty percent is nothing but zero point three. That's all I want. Can I erase this? Sir, would opening balance and closing balance be relevant? And amount paid to creditors was not given. Ha. Huh? in that case yes next prop if they don't give amount paid to creditors then we need to find it out they'll give you further information like that next problem it is hmm? so has everyone copied or anyone still waiting or anyone wants me to wait with any or any portion you want me to show okay others who are done can start going through question number 9 no problem 
I'll wait. Others who are already done can go through question number nine. If you want any portion me, uh, for me to show, let me know. Financing activity you want. Oh, okay. Sir, profit on sale of investment, no effect, sir. No, under direct method, we are not worried about that. <coughs> profit, sale and all is irrelevant. It will have an impact under indirect method, which I'll talk about it after some time, maybe after half an hour or so. Hmm? Because when you make a profit, it impacts p and L. We are not using any p and L data here. Under indirect method, we use p and L data. That's the reason it will have an impact. Hmm? For now, you don't have to worry about that. Oh, in fact, one second, hang on, hang on, people. Our uh, ninth one is actually homework. Tenth one, you try. One, one minute, one minute. Let me see. Is that the one? One second. Tenth one is actually indirect method, I think. Eleventh one. Eleventh one, you try. Those of you are die, uh, trying. Others, are you still writing? You want me to still wait or can we proceed, people? Here, everyone is okay. Last bench. All copy done. Online? Done now. Okay, great. Come to question number, what did I say? 11th one. And by the way, the previous one, 10th one was, or is rather, 9th one is homework. Take that again. Similar question, even if you don't do homework question, I'm not too much bothered by it. If you have time, do it. These are all repetitive questions. Only the repetitive ones, I give it as generally homework. So, 9th is work cut. 10th and 11th. Where is 11th pa? Over here. Prepare cash flow statement of Gamma Limited on 31st for the year ending 31st March 20X1 from the following information. Any problem? Yes, yes. Guys, settle down. Sales for the year amounted to 135 crore of which 60 percent was cash sale so that means sir in this problem we have last problem we had totally cash sale here they're saying only 60 percent is cash sale so balance 40 percent will be credit sales okay so if you have sold goods on credit means you will collect some money from your debtors also so both cash sale information will be there as well as cash received from Letter information, both will be available here. Okay. So, no need to do us for small, small things and all working note. So, we'll directly see if required. Later on, we'll put up a working note. Let's have the format ready. You can make that format. You want me to wait for a minute or so? You want to make that format or you want to tick? What, what do you want to do? Okay. If someone was want, wanting to make the format, I'll wait. You can quickly make that. And this is question number. Question number 11 and cash flow statement of uh, Gamma Limited. As on 31st March 20, X1. Can we start people or still making that format? Hmm. Are you see able to see some improvement in your handwriting? Not with respect to legibility in respect of the speed speediness or the fast. Has it improved a little bit? No, sir. Only hands are paining, sir. Yeah? <laughs> yes, sir. It's okay, pa. You know, you know, you Hmm. 
Hmm, I don't speak all the language, but few few I can manage. Okay, sir. Can we start the problems or? Hmm. First, sir, total sale one thirty five crore. I think all this data here are given in crores, no? So let's express everything in crores. That is probably my most of us aim also, no? To become crores patis, no? <laughs> okay. Hopefully, if that is your dream, internet is problem, sir. Who's internet, sir? Guys, are we having any audio video issue? Yours, sir. Yours, much? I can't help, no da. Yeah. Hmm. My knowledge is very limited to only few standards. But internet repair and all, I don't know. Yeah, you you take care of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sales is one thirty five crore, and they said sixty percent is cash sales. So directly, can we ascertain cash sale data? So the cash sales will be one thirty five ka sixty percent. How much is this? Eighty one. The balance will be credit sale. Sir, credit sale information will it come in cash flow statement? No. What information relating to credit sales will come? Amount received from debtors. Okay, if they don't give amount received from debtors, then maybe we have to prepare a debtors ka ledger and get that as a balancing. We'll see. Hmm? For now, let this be there. So here I, I can write one more thing that is cash from debtors. But for the time being, can I update the amount? No, maybe if if they give it later, I'll update it. Otherwise, we may have to do some working. Let it be for the time being. Hmm? Next, sir, purchase for the year amounted to fifty-five crore, of which credit purchase was eighty percent. Sir, if eighty percent purchase is on credit, means the twenty percent will be on cash. Will cash purchase come under under in cash flow statement? Yes. Under what activity? Operating activity under operating activity directly I shall write cash purchases. What is the total purchases? Fifty five of that. The credit is eighty percent means cash is purchase will be balanced twenty percent which will be eleven. Cash purchase positive number or negative number? Negative number. Anyway, all the numbers are in crores only. And also people that reminds on the crore the side of things. Also, do take up the investment things, investment journey. Also, seriously, people. I wish many of us would have addressed or told me before when I was starting my article ship journey or we are going. We are finance students. Okay, we are CS. After clearing, so many people will come to you for advice. Where to invest, sir? This sir, that sir, hundred and one thing they will ask. But unfortunately, most of us only would have not done the investment. So the way, the sooner you start your investment journey, the better it will be for you. Because life is uncertain, sir. You never know how long can you work for. Some of us, maybe our dream is to become CA. Doesn't mean your dream is to work as a CA even till sixty years, seventy years. May not be. Yes or no? So probably some of us want to chill, travel the world at fifty or forty-five also. So that is oh, now only. Now only two months. Unless you have. A, uh, let me not go there. Yeah. So. <laughs> So try to take that up also quite seriously. It is important. The sooner you start, the better it will be. The compounding effect. Okay. So don't have to go for fancy thing of digging shares, gears and all. You can start simply with mutual funds. That is good enough. A large cap, one 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 fund, maybe in large cap, small cap, mid cap, invest one one. That's good enough. How much ever you can. Anyway, SIP starts at five hundred rupees also. Don't give an excuse that my stipend is only that much. I think nobody's stipend is so low also. I think these days, yeah, some you can invest. Yes, the sooner you start, the better it will be. Trust me on that. Hmm? All right. Oh, anyway, so too much better. Yeah, thought I'll put it across. Hmm? Anyway, so come back to the adjustments now. Administrative and selling expense amounted to eighteen crore. Salary paid amounted to twenty two crore. Sir, admin expense paid, salary paid, both are what's operating activity. So, admin expense paid. How much is that admin expense paid? Eighteen crore. Positive, negative, negative. Then it's just salary paid, and salary paid is how much? Twenty-two crore. Again, negative twenty-two. I don't invest in private company and all that. For that, you need a lot of funding. No money. Okay. All right. Next, next one. Company redeemed debentures of 
ट्वेंटी करोड़ सो स्टॉप दैर रिडम्शन ऑफ डिबेंचर्स वॉट काइंड ऑफ एन एक्टिविटी डिबेंचर इश्यूड एंड डिबेंचर रिडीम्ड बोथ आर फाइनेंशियल एक्टिविटी सर वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ द डिबेंचर ट्वेंटी करोड़ But you redeemed at par or at premium? What? You redeemed at a premium of ten percent. So the face value of the debenture is twenty crore, or its value is twenty crore. But you are paying ten percent extra. So how much are you paying towards redemption? Twenty crore plus ten percent, which is twenty two crore. Okay, one second. So total redemption value is, or maybe I'll write it over here. Redemption value is how much, sir? Twenty. 20 crore plus 10 percent, which is 22 crores. What are you doing? Debenture holders were issued equity shares of 15 crores towards redemption, and the balance was paid in cash. cash. Sir, there are multiple ways through which you can redeem debentures. One such redemption we already saw that is purchasing the debentures from the open market for immediate uh, cancellation. Investment in own debentures. So, oh, okay, that is one method. Or you can convert debentures into equity shares. That is also one method of redemption. Or you can simply pay cash and say done. Yes. So here twenty two crores you need to pay to the debenture holders. What and all you gave, or how and all did you discharge this twenty two crore? Of this twenty two fifteen crore you paid. You issued a equity shares. You told the debenture holders, "Macha, I'll give you equity shares worth fifteen crores. Are you okay?" Debenture holders, no problem. Told, I'll take it. In this twenty-two crores, they accepted equity shares for fifteen crore. For the balance, balance is what, sir? In twenty-two fifteen, you have settled in debentures. Means the balance is seven crore. For the balance, what are you giving? You're giving cash. Okay, sir. Sir, is the topic name redemption of debentures or is it cash flow statement? Cash flow statement. Now you tell me in this three pillars or in these three information, which is relevant for my topic currently? The information that is relevant for us is cash coming in or cash going out. Twenty-two crore and fifteen crore is the it affects your debenture holders' ka ledger or maybe debentures' ka ledger. Am I preparing that? I'm preparing only cash flow statement. So how much cash went in or how much cash went out in this process? Seven crore ka cash went out. I means I'm only interested in this redemption of debentures. Which activity, sir? Come under financing activity and write redemption of debentures. No need for any working out. Straight away you can present it like this only. Totally, what is the value of debentures? Twenty crore. But you are paying ten percent extra. So total payout required is twenty two crore. In that 15 crore you gave via equity share, so the balance 7 crore will obviously be towards will be towards cash. So that is what we require. Okay, if you want, you can show like this also as a separate working note, or simply if you write like the way I've shown in brackets in exam, that is good. Ah, uh, negative you have to write. Ah, huh? okay, one second. Yeah, redemption of debentures should be negative, correct. Sir, interest. Somebody is asking interest adjustment and all. They would have already done. Pa, we don't have to worry about that. Hmm? In fact, I'll write it on the other out the column. This is seven crores. This side. <coughs> They'll give some information and then do it. Hmm? Because they have not given no. What percentage? You can also assume the debentures and write it also. Because they have not given the date of redemption also. Oh, in fact, next line only actually. Adya, you probably went a little ahead, much. Hmm? The next line only they told. What is that? Debenture interest paid during the year was one month. So maybe he read that and he is asking this doubt. Okay, oh, maybe I did not read that. None of this. Debenture interest paid, sir. Interest paid on debentures again is what sort of activity? Financing activity. So come under financing activity and write interest on debentures. One point. I call. This is also negative. Hmm. Aditya Garu, okay, Nama. Hmm. All right. Next dividend paid during the year eleven point seven crores. So eleven point seven dividend is what sort of activity? So under financing activity, come under financing and activity and write dividend paid. So far. So far, easy, everyone.
ओके नेक्स्ट एडजस्टमेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट कॉस्टिंग ट्वेल्व करोर वॉज सोल्ड एट अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ टू पॉइंट सर कॉस्ट इज दिस मच यू मेड अ प्रॉफिट मीन्स वॉट विल बी योर सेल वैल्यू सेल वैल्यू ऑब्वियसली हैज टू बी ट्वेल्व प्लस टू पॉइंट फोर विच इज फोर्टीन पॉइंट फोर करोर सो सेल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ एन एक्टिविटी अंडर इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी राइट सेल ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट The cost of investment is twelve crore. You sold it at a profit of two point four crore, so your sale value is fourteen point four crore. It's a sale, so it's a cash inflow, so positive number. Okay, next. Eight crore was paid towards income tax, so they have not given any other information. Just eight crore paid tax paid. Where it will come under? Under operating activity, right? The tax paid, and the tax paid is eight crore, right? So it outflow, so negative. Under operating activity itself. Next, oh, what is next? Oh, a new plant costing twenty-one crore was purchased in part exchange of an old plant. So you have done some barter system. Old plant you have given away, and you have purchased the some new plant. Sir, what is new plant's value? Twenty-one crore. So the book value or the carrying amount of the old plant in your books was twelve crore, but the vendor took over old plant at a value of only ten crores. The balance was paid in cash to the vendor. Sir, we have a new plant, and that new plant का value is how much? Twenty one crore. Now, should we have to pay entire twenty one crore in cash? Since we gave away old plant, obviously we need not pay to the vendor entire twenty one crore. We will pay him a lesser amount. So the carrying amount of the old plant in our books, the book value of this old plant is twelve crore, but the vendor took it for. 10 crore so tell me which i should take for this calculation because out of this 21 crore a part of the payment is done by old plant another part is done by cash, cash. so for this part i should consider the book value or vendor ka taken over value sir you could in your books you may show whatever value ultimately you have exchanged this plant no so that particular other guy he is ready to take this plant only for what value he is considering its value is only 10 crore so he is saying out of 21 crore 10 crore liability is settled by giving away old plant that's what they are trying to say the balance balance is how much sir 21 crore minus 10 which is 11 crore is settled by giving away cash any doubt in this setup anyone so tell me in this three information again what is relevant for cash flow statement now we want only cash coming in or cash going out so which is the cash information here 11 crore this cash is towards what purchase of plant sir purchase of plant and machinery what sort of activity investing activity come under investing activity and write purchase of plant simply you can write 21 crore minus 10 crore which is 11 crore it's an outflow so negative Okay. Next, the following balances are also provided, sir. They have given a check here. We are preparing cash flow statement for the year ended thirty first March two zero x one, sir. They have given balances on first April two zero x zero and balance as on thirty first March two zero x one. What are these two, sir? First April two zero x zero ka balance is opening balance. Next information is relating to closing balance. Can anyone tell me why have they given debtors bank ka opening and closing balance? We need because we have to plug this in cash and cash. I mean cash flow statement. Why have they given debtors and creditors ka opening closing balance? Sir, question is over. No other information. We need cash paid to creditor and cash received from debtor. Was like last problem is that information given to us or missing? Missing. That means we have to prepare some working notes and get them as a. Balancing figure for that they have given this information. 
so we'll see that how we can use that so working note number one here we can put it up maybe for what is the first debtors we'll do debtors college debtors college we should prepare it sir do you know debtors opening balance yes debtors opening and do watch out people it's not always first opening balance and then closing balance many a times they interchange the orders this is a common appearance just check and do it many times it does so here it is first april 20x0 and then 31st march 20x1 so it first is opening and then it is closed so opening balance of data is how much 45 opening balance of data comes on the debit side two balance brought down 45 similarly where will closing balance come the credit side you're right buy balance carry down how much is that 50 crore so when you're doing working out and all, don't worry about date or particulars or journal folio and all that. Just simply one draw like a line, line, line like this and do it. Okay. No need for all that uh, headings and all that. Some all that sambrama not required. Okay, sir. All right, sir. Do you know credit sales? Sir, total sales is 135 crore, they told. In that 60% was cash sale means balance 40% will be credit sales. What's the journal entry for credit sales? Purchases account. Ah, hmm. Credit journal entry for credit sale is uh, purchases account. That day. <laughs> that are store sale. What is the total sale, sir? 135 crore. Cash sale is 60% means credit sale will be 40%. So 135 into 40% is how much? 54. So that means that is credit sale. Any other information given bad debt, so discount to blah, 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 blah. No. So that's all. Ledger should match. This side total is 99. That side also should be 99. Is it matching or balancing figure? How much balancing figure? 49. Something should come on the credit side as balancing figure. Don't say bad debts. Sir, 54 crore sales you have made and in that 49 crore bad debts. Huh? Okay, what is a rational assumption? So what is this 49? It is money received from debtors. So that means this is what? By cash or bank arrived as a balance. Eh? So this information they had not given. So to find out this, we prepared a debtors college. Is this Saru? So can we write working notes next to the entries itself instead of making separate ledgers? Here, uh, inside this format, you will make ledger. Uh, it look very odd. Better do it separately. Okay, it look very, very odd. Ideally, cash flow statement and all is a format recommended by AS3. So don't bring in the working note inside the normal solution. Don't do it. Okay. So like these sort of presentation, if you want to do like small, small working notes, if you are asking about this, that is acceptable. But don't bring in a whole ledger inside any working note, it will become too odd. Presentation wise. Hmm? Better show it separately. Okay, great. So, uh, cash received from debtors, where it will come under? Operating activities. So under operating activity, write cash from debtors. As per working note number 1 and that we got it as 49. So, positive number. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I think we also needed uh, creditors. Cash paid to creditors. Can we put creditors college because they have not given that information? They were given creditors opening and closing balance. How much is that? Creditors opening balance 21. Creditors closing balance 23. So creditors opening balance comes on the credit side, sir. My balance brought down 21. Two balance carried down 23. This is given, just pushed it into the ledger. Do you know credit purchase amount? Not directly, but indirectly, I think they have given. Total purchases is 55 crore. In that, they told credit purchase is 80%. Hmm? So, credit purchase ka journal entry is what, sir? Purchase account debit to creditor. So, when your posting will be buy purchases here. Total purchase is 55 crore in that credit purchase amounts to 80 percent. So this is how much sir? 44 crores is your credit purchase. 
any other information relating to credit as they've given an adjustment like discount received uh, bills indoors do blah 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 anything of that sort no so sum it up so it'll, this is 65 that side also should be 65 balancing figure is what sir 42 you are getting something on the debit side as balancing figure what can come as 42 on the debit side as balancing figure sir? that is nothing but amount paid it to creditor so the creditors to cash account or bank account arrived as a balancing <coughs> do we need this 42 for our cash flow statement very much yes i think we already updated that somewhere now first line yeah, yeah i think cash from data is also here i'll write here only i'll write working note number one this is 49 okay and similarly cash paid to oh, cash paid to creditors i didn't update huh? no problem we'll write it here cash paid to creditors or amount paid to creditors as per a working note number two and that amount is 40 42 crores negative so both we have updated all the information we have captured so sum up people all operating activity ka, cash flow ka, sum it up 29. one 129 huh? just, 29. just 29 positive or negative positive so net cash flow from operating activity is 29 Similarly, sum up investing activity ka cash flow. 3.4 positive. Great. Cash flow from financing activity ka summing up. 20.2 negative. All the three activities ka cash flow. 29 plus 3.4 minus 20.2. If you sum up all the three activities, you're going to get? 12.2. 12.2 is positive. All these are calculator work. It's not necessary. Everything you have to do. You can trust your colleagues also. Yeah. <laughs> so, opening uh, cash and cash balance. Do you know? Uh, opening cash balance is RU6. So, if you add these two, 12.2 plus 6 gives us 18.2. That's what our statement is telling. And uh, what is the closing balance as per the question? 18.2 so looks like we have uh, done it correctly now others are wondering what the so break kodisa one minute hang i think we'll do a uh, first all operating cash flows operating uh, i mean this these sort of adjustments and then we'll take a break anyone wants me to zoom in on anything to be updated in our notes Can you explain 22 crore? What is that 22 crore, ma? 22 crore where? This one, huh? Redemption of debentures part, huh? Totally you have to pay 22 crores towards redemption. Are you comfortable with that? Not this, huh? Then which one? Which is 20? Then I didn't understand what is 22 crore. Cash paid to employees. Cash paid to employees is part of our operations. Without your employees, can you run any business organization? Can any organization sustain? No. So this is also part of your operation. Hmm? Any amount that you paid to your employees, it doesn't matter whether you call it as factory worker or whether you call it as salary, wages, anything you call it, any employee expenditure comes under operating activities. Okay. Debentures. Debentures ka simple. The value of debentures is 20 crore. You have to redeem at a premium of 10%. So that means totally you need to pay 22 crore. Is that sunk in? Totally you need to pay 22 crore. Is that fine, Madhu? The first portion. Is this okay? All right. So now you have to pay 22 crores. You're settling this 22 crore in two ways. One, you give equity shares. Okay, they have agreed for it. You don't have to question why did the debenture holders accept. They were comfortable, so they took it. You gave equity shares worth how much? 15 crore. So out of 22 crore, 15 crore you settled by giving equity shares. So what is the balance? In 22 crore, may 15 crore if you have settled means balance is only 7 crore. That you settled by cash. That's what they're saying over. Okay. And since we are paying or we are preparing cash flow statement we want to know cash coming in and cash going out so here only 7 crore of cash went out 
15 crore you settled by giving equity shares. Equity shares is not. Okay, one debenture you cancel by giving away equity shares. That's all. So there towards this 15 crore, no cash is coming in, nor any cash is going out. Hence, this is irrelevant. Now, fine. Okay. Which last portion, ma? The creditors wala or cash flow statement ka? Others can go through question number 13, one three. Thirteen, one three. We have a couple of questions, five five minutes wala. We'll finish that and then uh, again take a break. <laughs> Done. Okay. Which which question did I say? Thirty. Okay. So it's a simple. Sir, these sort of questions are also quite popular in examination, especially if they want to ask for like two marks, three marks. No, they'll not give any calculation. They'll simply give you some transaction and tell whether what kind of a cash flow is this operating, investing or finance. So that's all. These sort of questions is this classify the following as operating, investing, finance and cash equivalent by with reference to accounting standard three. First, brokerage paid on purchase of investment. Sir, purchase of investment is what activity? Investing. investing activity. Normally, you buy the shares and all with the help of broker. And broker may charge some commission. Correct? Is that commission necessary to buy the investment? Yes. So, if investment purchased is investing activity means the brokerage paid on such investment is also investing activity. So, this will also be classified as an investing activity. That's all you need to write the answer. Answer is given over there. Okay, or maybe we'll look at it here. <laughs> Or maybe it's okay. We'll look, uh, we'll check and uh, look at it later. Then. Hmm? Underwriting commission pay. Sir, underwriter is basically a broker who helps the company to sell company ka shares or debentures to the public. Now, whenever a company wants uh, wants to issue some shares, there'll be lakhs and lakhs of crores of people who would like to invest. Do you think company will be able to in a position to market to the people door to door? No, company probably would not like to spend their time in marketing because they, are, they would like to concentrate on their business. All the selling activities, you no, know, they offload it off or they give all this assignment to someone called investment bankers. Like your uh, Dosh Bank, uh, Credit, uh, I mean, City Bank, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, like this. These people take up all these assignments. Okay, they we refer to as what? Or them we refer to as underwriters. So basically, they are those guys if let's say Infosys, if they want to sell some shares, if they already issue, issued some shares, they need a little more money. They want to further issue the shares. Okay. They take the help of somebody called the underwriters. What does the underwriter do? They help this Infosys to sell that company ka shares to the public. Like if you want to buy Infosys ka share, obviously there'll be a lot of legality involved. So these people will take care of all that paperwork. The, we call that as book building process, we say. All that process will take care of yeah. underwriter. Okay. Do you think that underwriter broker will do all this for free of cost? Obviously, he will charge some commission. So, underwriter is basically a broker. So, if you really want to call it as a difference, sir, you want to sell a house. You appointed a broker. He showed the house to many, many people. But unfortunately, what's the problem? Nobody is buying. Now, can you tell the broker, your headache, you buy? He'll throw the keys at you and get lost. Yes, sir. Correct. Can you insist to the broker that you should buy? No. But, 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 if nobody buys a company car shares, company can tell the underwriter you buy. Company can tell the underwriter you buy. That's the reason that commission will be on the higher side. Okay. So that's the difference between, main difference between an underwriter and a broker. So normal broker will not buy your asset if nobody buys. But an underwriter will buy your company ka shares if a company does not or we have this minimum subscription and all no? 
if company does not hit minimum subscription then underwriter have to buy those shortage wala shares that's the reason commission generally all will be on the higher side so forget about all that it was there as a topic before about 4 5 years ago underwriting was a topic in our ca intermediate i think 5 years back now all that is probably irrelevant so they have taken off all that topic it got removed long back itself anyways now you tell sir this underwriting commission is related to what keep that in mind it's related to share issue or debentures issued now you tell the shares given or debentures given is what sort of activity financing activity so debentures or underwriting commission paid will be towards what sir if it is related to shares so if shares are financing activity means underwriting commission paid will also be towards financing activity itself so this particular information you will show under financing activity itself any confusion there or next one next work okay. trading commission receipt trading commission is part of your operation they are only saying trading trading means which is related to your day to day operations maybe you you sell some company ka products and you get some commission maybe that is your line of or main line of business now you tell if you are receiving any commission as part and parcel of your operations what sort of an activity is this this is an operating cash flow yes no sir proceeds from sale of investment sir if you sell an investment what sort of activity investing activity purchase of goodwill sir intangible asset purchased intangible asset purchased intangible asset sold both are what activity investing activity redemption of preference shares sir preference shares issued as well as preference shares redeemed both are what activity financing activity rent received from property held as a investment rent received from property held as investment is what activity investing activity they only told okay how do we show that property you will not learn it here you will learn it as in ca final there is a separate standard called in days 40 we call that as investment property just in case you wondering there is a separate treatment for it you will not learn it here next level hmm? okay but it is an investment so rent received also will be treated as investing activity only that much is good enough remember that interest paid on long term borrowings long term borrowings is your debentures or bank loan on that you have paid some interest what sort of activity is this Financing activity. Next, marketable securities. Sir, marketable securities means could be whatever debentures, shares, whatever. Hmm? Having risk of change in value. So now tell whether it is an investing activity or is it a cash equivalent? Is it a cash equivalent or not a cash equivalent? Because for you to call it as a cash equivalent, one the maturity should to a term a term should be less than three months. it should be readily convertible into known amounts of cash three it should not have significant value or it should have insignificant value change risk is what we say or its value change risk should be on the lower side but here what they told having a risk of change in value that means its value will fluctuate too much is what they say if value fluctuates too much is it a cash equivalent or not a cash equivalent not a cash equivalent I means these sort of investment when you purchase no you will not show it as cash equivalent rather you will show it as an investing cash flow they have, i think they have written it as not cash equivalent rather they should you can write like this it is an investing activity okay you will show this under investing activity sir suppose if it was cash equivalent where it would have come sir sir tell the last two components of cash flow statement last two components opening cash and cash equivalent and last if it was a cash equivalent you would show this under opening cash and cash equivalent and get the close like that are we okay if it is a cash equivalent for cash equivalent we have opening category and then we have closing category there it will come okay otherwise it will come either under operating or under investing or under finance since this is not a cash equivalent it has to come under investing act like that. you can write both if you want or write like our study material kinds that is also work it last one ji sir what if they did not give anything in bracket somebody is asking so if the bracket nothing was mentioned what to do then you can assume generally they will not you can assume if you assume that it is its value does not change much and you will sell off this investment within 3 months then you can put it under cash equivalent 
or if you assume that its value fluctuates too much you can put it under investing activity that depends on your assumption generally they don't give such loose ended questions in exam they will tell what it is hmm? all right refund of income tax received sir income tax paid is what activity operating activity sometimes what happens we may end up paying a little more also you have already studied some when order gets passed there will be some disallowances and allowances also so sometimes very rarely we may also get some refund because you have studied advance tax concept companies have to pay quarterly advance tax sometimes you overestimate your tax liability and end up paying more then finally when you file the return you will ask the refund from the government may be possible also so if you have received that refund what sort of activity they are asking this also tax paid is an operating activity so refund of tax paid is also operating activity okay you will show this as a positive number basically this also will come under operating cash flow itself done sir one minute sir one more question is there then we can go for indirect method five minutes that's all like this question this is all a question no calculation hmm? don't we know our students yeah so last last may i know i keep these sort of questions only. <laughs> numerical question means you'll say ah, oh, ah, oh, and all. five minutes this means a uh, little easy for you also a little easy for me also hmm? come to question one do ek I just got a pop up saying looks like you're done with talking we lower your hand i think that feature is there in zoom <laughs> i thought why am how am i done with talking i still have around another 3 hours to go hmm? yeah thought somebody is playing a prank on me hmm. looks like not the case okay question one people intelligent limited such a nice company a non financial company has the following entries in bank accounts it has sought the your advice the future chartered accountants the treatment on preparing the cash flow statement sir simply they will give you some various components you need to tell whether it is operating investing or financing activity that's all maybe loans and advances given to the following to the few people they have given loans and advances and they have also earned some interest on obviously if you are giving some interest or if you are giving some loan you will end up earning some interest so first loan is given to suppliers creditors you know you sometimes pay advance before purchasing before the creditor gives you the goods you pay him some advance that they are saying so advance paid or loans given to suppliers what sort of an activity sir or suppliers employees all these are part of our operation so if you have given any loan to your creditors as part of your activity or to your employees all that will come under operating activity itself so the first one is operating cash flow itself any confusion no. what if i lend the loan advance to bank no uh, it doesn't matter we don't really look at it like that generally when you are trading means sometimes you end up paying suppose you are trading with a new guy you have your set of creditors now you want to buy it from a new vendor the new vendor told i'm dealing with you for the very first time i'm not getting confidence the value of the order let's say is high 100 crores so he told give me the advance then i will supply you the goods so it doesn't much uh, depend on the frequency as such still as a general rule we put it under operating activities okay you have given some loans and advances to employees again all these are part of your operation so if you end up going joining any company every company will have or majorly or most of the companies will have policy of giving loan to them employees normally 8 months of your salary 10 months of your salary they generally give out as loans and advances this is part and parcel of your remuneration or package also you could say this is part of your operation so this will also come under operating activity it's loans and advances given to subsidiary company meaning sir you have invested in subsidiary company either you have given a loan or you have purchased subsidiary company ka equity shares this you tell me this every day day in and day out you do you do do this no this will be treated as what investing activity because you have invested your money it's not loan taken people it is loan now given okay so that means this will act as an investment because nobody does this day in and day out as part of operations so this is specifically clubbed under or it will be reflected under 
investing activities any doubt under the first component what sir who answer next investment made in subsidiary company smart limited and dividend received so you purchased some equity shares of your subsidiary company in the previous case maybe you gave them some pure loan now they are saying we purchased some equity shares of your own subsidiary company if you want to call it a subsidiary you should own more than 50 percent we have to do consolidation we will study about that as well i mean about maybe next week or so we might start with consolidation we'll see hmm? Okay, so now you tell me, sir, if you have invest made some investment or purchased subsidiary company ka equity shares and if you have received some dividend on it, what sort of an activity is this? Both are investing activity itself. Both buying the shares as well as dividend received. Both are investing activity. Dividend paid what activity? Financing activity. Awesome. TDS on interest income earned on investment. Sir, interest on investment is what activity? Interest on investment, what activity? Investing activity. TDS is also tax. I told tax could be related to anything. Here, income, interest income is investing activity. Means the TDS on that is also investing activity. So, this is also what? Investing activity. TDS is nothing but tax sir. deducted at source. This is your, you'll learn it in your income tax. 194, section what part? One nine. One nine. No, this one, TDS on interest comes under 184 JL, 194 IR. What is that section? Okay. Leave. Ah. Ah. That's all right. So, Income Tax Act stipulates that if at all you are receiving interest, some of them who don't know about it quickly, if you are just coming for uh, accounts class without watching tax, that's all right. Quickly, I'll tell you. Suppose you have earned an interest. Let's say you have invested in bank deposit and you have earned interest on deposit for 10,000 rupees. You have invested your money in fixed deposit. And bank is giving you an interest of, or on that FD you have earned an interest of 10,000 rupees. Sir, the bank will not give entire 10,000 to the customer. Of this 10,000, they will deduct something. Let's say that is 10%. 10,000 ka 10% is how much? 1,000. That much they will deduct and the balance 9,000 only they will give it to you. This 1,000 deducted, we call it as tax deducted at a source or TDS. Okay, why do they do this is, sir, if you have invested in a bank FD, on that bank FD you are earning interest income, sir, on your income you are expected to pay tax to the government. Do you like to pay tax? If given an option, anybody would like to pay tax? No. Everyone will say, who will pay tax to the government? They did not do road, all full potholes, 101 reasons we will give and then we will not pay the tax. But government will be at problem. Hence, they brought in a provision of TDS where they tell this is the income belonging to, let's say this is me, my income. I have invested in this fixed deposit. So, this 10,000 is whose income? My income. I means on this income, who's supposed to pay tax? Me to the government. But if I don't pay tax to the government, government is at a loss. Like me, there are crores of people. Is it possible the government to catch hold of individual people and tell you did not pay tax, you did not pay tax and keep sending notices to everybody? difficult. Hence, they brought in one concept of what? TDS, where they told who's paying this income to me? Who's paying this income to me? Let's say a bank. Banker name is? SBA. They imposed this on SBA. And they told, boss, don't pay entire 10,000 to him. We don't trust that way. Okay. We don't trust that that particular person will pay tax to me. Hence, you deduct 10%. It is his own tax. But I'll not wait for him to pay. You only deduct it and pay it off to me. Okay, so this way, this 10%, it, it depends what percentage income tax act each section, I mean, the section will quote for simplicity, I've assumed it as 10%. So this 1000 will not be given to me. I will receive only how much, sir? 9000 rupees. This 1000 rupees TDS, SBI will straight away remit it to the government. My, on my behalf, they are only paid to the government. This way, what happens? It is difficult to catch crores of people, but it is easy to catch one SBI. So if SBI doesn't catch, I mean, they don't do this means automatically they'll send a notice and all of them will automatically come under that notice. So this way it is very easy for government to manage. I'm sure Vikas sir would have explained it much easily, but uh, everyone understood this overall. Someone who has not uh, done the tax, you'll learn a lot more about this in tax. Simply, I thought it came. So I'm just giving you a quick overview of this. So this is what they told over here. My interest income is how much in this case? 
10,000. But entire 10,000 came to my hands. Uh, no, how much came? 9,000. This 1,000 is my income. Did it come to me or it went straight away to government? That we are calling it as TDS. That TDS, what we should do is what they're saying. This interest income is what activity? Investing activity. So TDS on that interest income is also interesting. Activity. So tax is basically flexible on what component the tax is getting, uh, the, what, uh, what component is getting taxed, whichever, whatever is the nature of that component, tax also assumes the same nature. If component is investing activity, then tax also becomes investing activity. If tax, if component is financing activity, tax or TDS also will become financing activity like that. Is it okay people or any doubt people? Okay, next one. TDS on interest earned on advance given to supply. Same drama. We have given some advance to creditors and earned some interest also. But one second, hang on. Advance given to supplier is what activity? First, advance given to supplier is what activity? Operating activity. Interest earned on that advance given to supplier is what activity? Operating activity. TDS on that interest also will become operating activity. Because component is an operating activity, the TDS relating to that component also will become operating like that. The relationship is established or classification is done, keeping that in mind. Can I go for last one, people? Insurance claim received against a loss of fixed asset by fire. Sorry, one asset is gone. Sale of asset is what activity? Investing activity. Here is that asset there or gone? Oh. Gone. We did not sell it, but it went off due to fire. But we are smart and we have taken one insurance policy. And from that insurance policy, we have got some money. But this money is insurance claim is related to what, sir? Fixed asset. Sir, fixed asset purchase or fixed asset coming in or fixed asset going out is what sort of an activity? <laughs> Investing activity. So the claim that you have received towards this fixed asset also should come under investing activities okay people sir this we call it as extraordinary items which we will learn it in accounting standard 5 this no requires separate disclosure meaning till now in cash flow statement we used to have this format now yes here you used to show all the components here you used to show you here we used to write operating activities and all no? this particular component has to be separately showed because it's an extraordinary items just give a separate disclosure maybe in one problem i'll take you through how the disclosure is made or if you are ready to sit for another five minutes i'll show you uh, okay no problem. but it uh, <laughs> so nicely that you know please beyond this don't ask yeah <laughs> we were also patient enough to listen to you for five five minutes but now we have reached our buddha's one yeah so but in this pro in this problem all the adjustments are good right no doubt there okay so let's take about uh, 20 minutes break and then we'll come back people Thank